All right, Kevin, back with you for another episode of Million Dollar Relationships. And today, I am here with my friend, Dove Gordon. Dove, welcome. Or excuse, I don't know why I said Gordon, Dove Barron. <laughs> you know what? I know Dove Gordon, too, and you probably do. A as different well. guy. <laughs> Some different guy. Very so, different guy. Yes. Good guy. But Dove, welcome. I am so, I, I'm excited to have you here today. Thanks, mate. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to being here. Looking forward to being of service. Absolutely. And I know you and I were talking a little bit before we started recording here and stuff. And 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 you and I met through Kevin Nations. And uh, you know, I want to I want to just quick shout out to Kevin uh, because you know when you know I mean I have long believed that relationships for entrepreneurs relationships are the most valuable asset that we have. Everything stems from that. And and you, you would think back to, you know, how you and I met Dev through a mutual friend. And because yep. we have this mutual friend that we both have so much respect for, it just that automatically carries over. And like we can have a conversation right from the get go, feeling like, man, we've known each other for years because we have this mutual friend. And uh, that is certainly the role that Kevin held here in, in you meet you and I meeting through our association with him and being in his world for a period of time. And uh, so I just want to honor that too. But what Absolutely. I mean and I want to, I want to have people understand something that, that trust is transferable. It's yes. just, it's just important that the person who transfers the trust to you, that you treat that with respect. So, you know, my, trust for kevin allows me to trust you your trust for kevin allows you to trust me but we both have a responsibility to to honor kevin as the the as the person who's conveyed that trust and has us carry it so uh, you know your work around building these million dollar relationships is really about this transference of trust and then honoring the person who, who was gracious enough to give that to you absolutely 100 percent. yes that was really, really well said, Doug. Well, what I'd like to do is start by just turning it over to you so that you can share a, a little bit of your background, what you do, who you serve, what inspires you to do what you do, and just kind of give us a little idea of like, who is Doug Barron? Uh, we don't have that long, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> We really don't. Um, but just the the cliff notes is um, I've been doing what I do, working with high level individuals who are uh, entrepreneurs, CEOs, athletes, entertainers, uh, the best of the best for about 37 years or so, I guess. Um, I'm the architect of the emotional source code and the anatomy of meaning Um uh, my background started out metaphysically, studying religious philosophies, uh, the Tao, Vedanta, Buddhism, Gnostic and Coptic Christianity, and Kabbalah. Uh, from there, started studying psychology because I kept meeting spiritual people who couldn't get their crap together. So I went, well, what's, what's, what's behind that? And the question that's driven me my entire life is, why do people do what they do, even when what they do doesn't make sense? Meaning to them. Like, yeah. I, why did I do that? Like, I don't get it. So I was driven by that question from being a kid because I grew up in a, in a ghetto or grew up around a lot of crime and violence and abuse of violence, uh, alcohol and other things. And um, so I want to understand why people did what they did. From the psychology, I got sick of people complaining and not doing anything. So they're so unactionable. Then I started studying what was then called in the early 80s, the psychology of excellence. Today it's called leadership. And I met a lot of soulless individuals. So I met people who were very successful, but like empty emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, that led me into 83, stumbled into quantum physics and neuroscience and started studying those. It was the very early days of neuroscience. And then put all that together to develop what is now called the emotional source code of, dis of discovering what drives people at an unconscious level and how to tap that to give their lives deep and powerful meaning. So like you, Kevin, the people that I work with are enormously successful. They've done really well. They could go out and buy another Rolls Royce. They could buy another yacht. They could buy an island, probably, many of them. 
but they're like, yeah, I know that that works, but it doesn't work for long. So I'm going to feel the high of that for about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering what's missing. My clients come to me and say, what's missing? I, I, I've done Tony Robbins. I've been to a therapist. I've made hundreds of millions of dollars. What's missing? I don't know what it is. And even if I do know what it is, I don't know how to get to it. That's my, that's what I do. Wow. Wow. You know, as listening to you talk, and I don't usually do this, but I just feel it's right based on what you just shared. Um, I met a guy, oh, this would have been like nine, 10 years ago. I met, and he's, he was a venture, he's a venture capital guy. And when mm -hmm. I met him, uh, I had shared something in a, in a meeting of entrepreneurs that just really resonated with him. And he ended up following me into the bathroom <laughs> on break. All righty then. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, Do not go in there. That's right. That's right. You know, when a, bil when a billionaire follows you into the bathroom, you know, you're going to have the conversation. <laughs> but he, he starts sharing with me how, you know, he, he's like, man, he's like, I, I work with some of the wealthiest people in the world. And yet, Kevin, I can tell you, they are also some of the most miserable SOBs you will ever meet. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and, and at that time, him and I were talking because he's like, you know what he's like, I, I've got a wife and two kids at home that I don't see nearly as often as I like. I know it's all my own doing, but man, what you shared there, Kev, I sure could go for some more of that in my life. And and mm -hmm. I will, you know, say, you know, now many years later, and it wasn't that a couple of years later, he started shifting things around, and now he has his business set up where he only works with people he chooses to work with intentionally, not just because they're wealthy and he can work with them, you know. And uh, but you're right. I mean, uh, you know, the, and and and. And the more successful someone is, the more prevalent this is, the bigger their problems are, the big, and the less people they feel they have around them that they can really confide in and be. Well, let, let's just address that, because I think it's an important thing. And, and the addressing of it is this, is, you know, when I'm working with a CEO, one of the questions I'll ask them is, tell me who on your team will tell you the truth. And they go, well, I really think that, you know, Bob or Susan will really tell me the truth. And I go, you're wrong. And they go, you don't know Bob or Susan. I go, I know, but I know you're wrong. And they go, why? I go, do they rely on you to make sure they keep getting a paycheck? And they go, yeah. I go, then you won't get the truth. That's the problem. You have something in the way of that relationship. It's called money, right? So for instance, when if you want to work with me, I put you through a process where you have to qualify. And you have to qualify to get the application to work with me. The application is another part of the qualification process. And I say no a lot more often than I say yes. Why? Because I don't want to work with you because you think you should do it. Yeah. It's you've got to do it. You absolutely have to. Because I'm not interested in convincing you or selling you on a damn thing. Yeah. No, nothing about that. So it's this same piece that oftentimes – the more power, money, or authority you have, the harder it is to get the truth. What all that also means is it's harder to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. So who yeah. are you gonna go to? So in many ways, I know the the person I just flew in and was here last weekend, he said to me, My wife doesn't even know these things about me. Mm -hmm. And I go, Well, of course she doesn't. But I'm not here to judge you, I'm here to serve you. And that means I'm going to kick you in the ass when you need it, but I'm also going to hold you emotionally in ways you've not been held. We don't have that. Societally, we don't have that. We have been driven, particularly as entrepreneurs, you know, we've got to go out there and you got to make it. you got to do more yeah. and, you know, hustle, hustle, hustle. Well, I'm sorry. The, the high priest of, of uh, hustle culture, Gary, I love Gary. He's a good guy as a human being. But that culture sucks. Mm -hmm. It sucks the life out of people. It's not a good way to live. And you get very quickly get to this is not working. Yeah. So yeah. that piece around being able to have the truth. And so most of those people who are in that high level, as you know, Kevin, as every much as, bit as much as me, they can't actually even admit I'm miserable. Yeah. 
We can't do that because they've got to be, ah, oh, yeah, you know, upbeat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you get them in the quietness of a bathroom, and they'll tell you, you know, I'm, I'm miserable here. Yeah. Like, and, and I don't know how to back out. How do you back away from I'm making a billion dollars and I'm miserable? How do you back away from that? Yeah. Without feeling like they're going to judge you. Yeah. Well, that's the work. That's the real work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? That was a little bit of, of a tangent there, but damn, Dove, that was really good, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> and thank you. And um, that, yeah, that was good. That was really good. Thank you for that. And uh, okay, so let's switch gears here just a little yeah. bit. And uh, I'm going to reiterate the question for the benefit of the listeners. Sure. Have you ever been introduced to a person or persons that completely changed the course of your life or your business so much so that much of what you have today would not even be possible if not for this person? And Dove, I am just, I'm really excited to hear your story and your experience around this. Um, well, there are all kinds of places I can go with this. Um, people tend to think that their lives are changed by a moment. I don't believe that, um, even at a quantum level. So, uh, every, every new decision is a new, new dimensional reality. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the people who dramatically changed my life, um, was my father. Um, my father, you may think, well, well, was he a great philosopher or was he a great, no, my father was a narcissistic, sociopathic individual. He changed my life because as a son, I wanted his love and approval. And realizing who he was and I could never get it was profoundly valuable in my life. Um, my spiritual path, my, my intellectual path, my, my creative path, my commitment to relationships all comes from my father being void of those things, looking at his life and how miserable he was and how everything was about him winning made him miserable, made me realize, ah, that's not the answer. So sometimes your greatest teachers are what I call the dark angels, mm -hmm. right? And my dad was definitely that he showed me the things that not to be, um, one of the people who, who taught me the most was a man I've never met. So sometimes you have uh, mentors you will never meet. So for me, that's Khalil Gibran. There's a book called The Prophet, if you've not read it. And that's uh, PH Prophet, not F. Um, it is the most profound book I ever read. It's a small book. I carry it with me when I travel. I read it multiple times a year. So I never met Khalil Gibran. He was dead long before I was born. Um, but profound wisdom about relationships, about love, about money, about work, about all kinds of things. And then the person who really changed the direction of my life was the greatest blessing of my life. That's my bride, my wife. Um, I realized in my 30s that I was crap at relationships at a romantic level. I was good at all the others, but romantic level. One of my mates, Todd, said to me one day, he says, you know, Dove, you're one of the smartest people I know. I can't believe how stupid you are at relationships. <laughs> <laughs> he was right. right. So I put myself back in therapy and began to examine that and got really clear and then I met my wife who challenged the hell out of me and made me really look at myself around how I could really show up in relationships. And the greatest gift of my life is that woman. She, the best thing I ever did was asking her to marry me. And the greatest gift was she said, yes. And to this day, she's, she's powerful. I, I love her more than anybody or anything in the world. I'm so blessed to have her in my life. Wow. Because wow. she made me examine what really matters. And that's what most of us don't do. So, those are people who impacted me profoundly, but I also want to have your listeners understand that sometimes the person who impacts you the most is the person you're most pissed at, the person who, who seems like a dark angel. Once you get to that place, you can go, oh, thanks. Thanks, Dad. You really reminded me, oh, I'm going down your path. I don't like that. Don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. Like, Drop the narcissism. 
drop the destructive behavior, not interested. Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. You know, it's interesting. Um, I interviewed, uh, I, I love hearing the way that you talk about your wife. Um, I I just have the most immense respect and appreciation for my wife as well, and I and I feel the same way that you do, Dove. That uh, you know, her saying yes when I asked her to marry me was just the greatest gift, you know. And uh, and I I interviewed one other gentleman. I don't know if you know him or not, Neil Moore. I interviewed him for this podcast, and uh, the person that he honored was his wife. And, and it was so cool to, I mean, because he spent the whole time interviewing, talking about his wife, Hunter yeah. is her name. And, uh, and, and, and I was like, man, this is a guy who just really loves and appreciates his wife and stuff. And, uh, and so for you, I, I and I'm going to ask this question, Doug, because this is much for me as for anybody else, because, sure. because sure. I believe that, you know, I, I think I'm pretty good at my, I'm pretty good at relationships. I think I'm pretty good at my relationship with my wife, but I always want to get better. Mm -hmm. I always want to improve. And, and mm -hmm. so for you, I would, I would like to ask, you know, what are one or two things that have happened uh, in your life where you the, where it's just been such a huge impact that was made that that you know hands down would have never happened if not for the relationship that you and your wife have together that's that's really a great question um because the answer to it sadly is everything what i mean by that is my, the course of my life was changed by this woman. So, for instance, when I met her, I owned a personal development company okay. with a whole suite of programs and, you know, uh, like I think seven programs, uh, the shortest of which was a two day training. And most of them were five or seven day trainings, you know, and her working side by side with me. So she was in dentistry. Renuka was in dentistry. Uh, Ren left dentistry to come and work with me. She worked with me and she said, are you loving what you're doing? Mm -hmm. And I, I did, right? And she said, okay, are you making the difference you want to make? And I started to cry. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not. And she said, why? Is it that you don't know enough? And I said, I, I you know, you know how dedicated I am. I, I like I study every day for a minimum of an hour. Always have, and so it's not that. She goes, you know, are you living what you're teaching? I go, yeah, I'm asking you. She goes, I believe you do. So why are you not having the impact? And I said because, and I, I would never have gotten to this. I said because I'm in a system that doesn't work. She goes, what do you mean? I said, I'm in the business of recycling. She goes, what do you mean? I said, have you noticed how many of the people come back and do the same program multiple times? And she goes, yeah. And they always get a lot out of it. I go, yeah. But there are also people who took Tony Robbins and they did this person's program or they did Harv Eker's program. And, and every time they're like, oh my God, this is the best thing since sliced bread, but they're not changing. Mm -hmm. And I said, therefore they're recycling. I'm in the recycling business and I don't like it. I don't feel it's integral. I can't do it. I closed up the business because of her. Wow. I closed it up. I didn't sell it. People go, why didn't you sell it? I couldn't do it. I was out of integrity. I just closed the doors and walked away. And I said, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to make a difference, then I have to really make sure that people are eating, sleeping, living, breathing it, that this is who they are. So that's what I work with my private clients on, and that's what I work with companies on. And as I said, my clients have to apply to work with me. They, there's an application process, and they fly in, and they're in my home for 24 hours straight. Now, let me just be clear. There's no napping there. So they start work at, seven, at 8 a.m. on Friday morning, and they leave at 8 a.m. Saturday morning. Nobody's been napping. 
We're digging mm -hmm. deep to deal with it. And then there are a contract to work with me for a year because I don't want to just give you the info. Information's worth the hole in the donut. Transformation takes place from the application of that information. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you're going to need somebody who will hold you accountable to it at the, when it's difficult to live there mm -hmm. because everybody's going to tell you that's not who you are. Well, what if it is? Because I want to honor your soul, not your head. Your soul, that part of you that is deeply, deeply connected to who you are. So I don't think anything in my life would have been the same without her. And, it, and it's that my wife is, and here's another thing. My wife and I have an agreement that we'll never change each other. Mm -hmm. But we'll always call each other at play and small. Mm, wow. So I never asked my wife to, to change anything. She's never asked me to change anything. But I'll do something that's, let's say it's a bit dickish. And she notices because we've all, you know, we have our dickish moments. That's a technical term for those of you. Go look up the psychology journals. Um, and she'll just say to me, she'll say to me, you know, back there. And but immediately she said that I'm, I'm already aware of what I've done. And she'll go and I'll go. Yeah. She go, how do you think you came across? And I said, I know I came across like this. And, this. and she just looks at me and goes, OK. Is that how you want to be? Is that how you want to come across? And I go, absolutely not. She goes, okay, well, I'm not asking you to change anything. I just know who you are. I know who you actually are. And that didn't seem representative of you. Yeah. No change. No request for change. Nothing. Total honoring of this human being on their journey. But being loving enough to say, is that really who you want to be? Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Yeah. Never, yeah. never, never do I feel repressed or denied by that. I feel honored to step into a deeper level of my soul. What a gift. What an amazing human being this person is. Yeah. Yeah. She teaches me how to love every day. Yeah. And so I imagine based on what you've shared that, you know, you, the other company that you had that you, that you closed down, you served a larger number of clients at any given time. It might've been, it was considerably larger. Versus, Way larger. Yes. Okay. And versus now. At a time. You work with a very small number of clients, but yet mm -hmm. I can guarantee the impact that you have now is so much bigger because you, it, it's kind of like it's the same thing in my world. It's it's not just the gifts that you and I have, you know, the gifts, the unique abilities, as Dan Sullivan would say, or what have you, but it's who we work with. It's who they are and how they show up and the footprint that they already have, that they are resourceful, they have resources, they can, like you talked about, they can, because you know what, yeah, information is worth nothing. It's it's implementation that makes it worthwhile. And because of who you serve, you know, now the impact is massive, all because of this conversation with your wife that caused you to realize that, huh, this is not fulfilling for me it might be profitable but it's not fulfilling and yeah, and and that that's i mean i know that that's the the center of your work as well as mine which is what is the impact yeah you know when people ask me you know because i do a lot of thing around helping people find their true purpose mm -hmm. and they go what's yours and uh, you know i can get into the depth of it but the summary sentence is this I'm here to impact the lives of people whose names I will not know and whose name the, uh, who and who will never know my name. That's right. That's right. And that's exactly what you just were sharing there, Kevin, yeah. is that when you impact one of your clients and they go away and have a conversation, they've never heard of Kevin Thompson. They don't need to hear of Kevin Thompson. What they need is the impact in their life that came through your client and maybe multiple generations. Mm -hmm multiple generations who were impacted by that one thing that you delivered that had that person come back to their own heart and soul and go, yeah, there's more to life than this. Yeah. And let me do that in a way that enriches and uplifts those around me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's huge. And, and yeah, you know, I, uh, it, this will tie right in to what you just shared. Cause I, I, Garth Brooks came out with this documentary on Netflix. And I don't know if you're a Garth Brooks fan or not. I've been a Garth Brooks fan for years. That is a, a musician, 
who loves what he does. Uh, he is not in it for the money. In fact, mm -hmm. he quit at the height of his career because he he wanted to raise his three daughters. And he's like, I can't raise my daughters if I'm in the music industry because I'm on the road all the time. He's like, right. so he quit at the height of his career so he could raise his three daughters. And then after Beautiful. his daughters were raised, he is, his wife was like, hey, you ever think about getting back into music? He goes, oh my gosh. He's like, the fans, I don't even think they're there anymore, you know? And, <laughs> and he's like, she's like, I think they are. And they were. Not only were the fans still there, but our kids are also into him. And so right. he came back huge. And But he tells this story of this friend of his, Pat. And Pat was Garth's connector, if you will. Pat, Pat was Garth's behind the scene guy that most people never knew about. And, and so, also, so Pat was his Kevin Thompson. Pat was his Kevin Thompson. And, and Pat helped him set up this big fat hairy deal of a concert in Central Park with HBO there to film it. Uh, and millions of people showed up for this thing. And, and, and Garth tells, it takes about 10 minutes sharing the whole story. But when I saw that, I'm like, that's, that's me. That mm -hmm. I, and I said, like, I want to make that kind of impact and I'm already doing it, but that just really gave me the clarity because it, that's what was really caused me to realize it's all about who you serve. It's, it's that two-way thing. It's that co-creative and collaborative process that makes the transformation possible. It's not just what we do. You, Dove, you couldn't do what you do if you weren't helping the right people. You know, you, no. you can do what you do with somebody else who's not a right fit, and you're not going to get the transformation because they're not a right fit for it. They're not ready for it. Yeah, no. no, exactly. And that's yeah. what I said about why, you know, it's what you brought up as such a good point is that, yeah, I was serving a lot more people and I was get, delivering great material, but it wasn't having the impact that it needed to have. Yeah. And, and that was my fault because I was trying to serve. I mean, you know, it was my ego. I was trying to serve a large group. And, you know, I remember going to a mastermind group where there was 20 of us in this group. And, they, and at one point, the facilitator said, you know, what's your, what's your B-hack? You know, what's your big hairy audacious goal? We've all done that stuff. We did it in the early 2000s. You know, what's your B-hack? So we ran around the room and they got to me and I went, yeah, you know, I want to be the next Tony Robbins. Right? I think this was like 1998 or something. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and, and lots of people were like, oh my God, if anybody can do it, it's you. You have the, you have the energy, you have the, you have the knowledge, you, you could do it. You know, and they were, they were all very nice and very complimentary. And then we went to the bathroom little break or bathroom i'm standing next to my buddy and he's like yeah you know and he's still keep cheering me on you know standing next to me we're doing what we're doing he's still cheering me on oh if anybody could do it you could do it and i suddenly looked at him and went you know what and he goes what i go i'm a liar and he goes you're a liar i go yeah i don't want to be tony robbins we go back in the room and we're talking about it and then they asked me and i was I, I lied i have no interest in being a tony robbins and they go why i go that's not for me. That's for Tony. It's great for Tony. Take nothing away from Tony. Great respect to the man, but that's not what I do. And being bad to him is me stepping into what other people think I should be. I said, and I said, I what I said was what other people tell me I should be. Yeah. But it's not who I am. Yeah. And this is one of the big things a lot of people you and I are dealing with were very successful have stepped into living the life that everybody said, you should be this. You should be the next that. You should be the next Elon Musk. You should be the next Steve Jobs. You should be the next whatever it is. And they've, they have the ability, they've stepped into that, but their soul's not with them. Yeah. yeah. They've left something behind yeah. that I'm going to help them to find and bring back. And, and then they go, oh. Now, what's interesting about it is they don't always change track, but they always change how they're doing it, why they're doing it, what's driving that. And that's the, that's what makes the difference. Yeah. Where are you coming from? It's not what you do. It's where are you coming from? That's right. That's right. Yeah. What inspires you? What really inspires you to do what you do? What is the why of your why? Yeah. So people say, well, this is my why. And I'll always ask, what, what's, what's the why of that? Yeah. What do you mean? 
What's the why of that? If you don't get to the why of your why, you've manufactured it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to ask yourself that question? Write down your purpose, your why right now as you listen to this, and then ask yourself that question. What is the why of that why? Yeah. And if it doesn't hit you hard emotionally, it's not real. You manufactured it. Sorry, I don't mean to be mean to you. That's not my intention. My intention is to wake you up to the idea that it's possible you manufactured something to please others rather than saying, what is the why of my why? What is driving me at a deep unconscious level? Because it may be negative and that's okay. Like I talked about my dad, it may be negative. And so this was so bad that I'm going to do this. Okay. It may be entirely positive. I don't know, but I'm challenging you to ask yourself that question. What is the why of my why? Because when I get to that, Everything transforms. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dove, that is huge right there. That is huge, right? There. I, I, I don't know if you saw me, I was just taking a little note on that. Right there. So Thank you. That was huge. That was huge. Okay. So Dove, for anybody listening to this right now, that is like, damn, Kev, I really like this Dove guy. I like who he is, what he stands for. Uh, I'd like to find out more about him and I, I know yeah I see right there on the screen you've had your website there the whole time is so is dovebaron.com is that the best place to go or is there anything else that they yeah you go to dovebaron.com um I I'm insane I'll give you my private email it's dove at dovebaron.com so d o v at d o v b a r o n dot com okay I'm easy to find if you search Dove Baron online there's only one of me and uh you know I'm on all the social media platforms of course uh, I write for Medium uh, under the Curious Leader is our, uh, uh, where we write the articles. YouTube channel, about a thousand videos on there and a couple of podcasts. You can also find me and I'm also guested on podcasts all the time. So, yeah, I'm not hard to find. But if you want to reach out to me, reach out to me in person, I'm happy to have a conversation with you. Uh, and you know what? Maybe I'm not a fit for you. That's OK. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Dove, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to have this conversation. This has been really awesome. Um, any any last thing that you would like to share before we call it a wrap? Uh, yeah, it's right above my shoulder on the screen. And that is, stay curious, my friends. Stay curious. Yeah. If you want to really enjoy your life and you want to look at the people who are suffering, the people who are suffering are the people who are not curious. You, we, you and I talked about our wives and how much we love them. Well, let me just tell you something. Everybody's fallen in love at some point, and they've fallen out of love. Everybody who got married, not everybody, but 99.9% .9 of people who get married think it's going to be forever. That's what they want. So what goes wrong? They stop being curious. They start thinking they know. I'm always curious about my wife. So stay curious, my friends, stay curious, stay curious about your own soul, Take, get curious about why you're really here on the planet and get really curious about the things you think you know and the people you think you know, you will be surprised. Mm -hmm. Take that book out of the library, that book that is your mother, that book that is your father, that book that is your sister, your brother, your best friend, just take it out of the library and say, hold on a sec, what is the chapter I've not read or not read in years? You may be very surprised if you've ever read a book twice, you go, oh, I forgot about that. Well, what about doing that with the people you love? What about doing that with your business? What about doing that in every area of your life? Stay curious, my friends. Stay yeah. curious. Awesome. Well, Dove, thank you again for taking the time to have this conversation. I really appreciate it. We, we definitely achieved our goal here today which uh you know anybody who listens to this is definitely going to be inspired to place an intentional focus on creating more real meaningful rewarding and profitable relationships in their lives so thanks so much thank you kevin it's been a pleasure and honor thank you for having me on absolutely